Welcome back to John's Films, where we check all things odd with DaVinci Resolve. Today we're going to do something just because I think it's fun. We're going to run DaVinci Resolve 16.1 on Linux. We'll run it in Ubuntu, even though that isn't its native Linux distribution, uh, because I've run that one a lot in the past, and I can configure it pretty easily for it. We'll run timeline performance as well as some renders, and I think you might be surprised by the results. Let's get to it! As with all our timeline benchmarks, we'll start by making sure that we delete our optimized media, we uncheck all of our proxy options, ensure that we've got no render cache, no fusion cache. This gives us a realistic view of what it looks like when the processor is working and the graphics card is rendering in timeline. Next thing you can see is that indeed, I've installed the proprietary drivers, don't kill me, for the NVIDIA graphics card. And the 2080 Ti is cranking. We'll zoom in so we can see the timeline performance as it plays back. You'll notice it sticks to the frame rate. That's the intended frame rate here, 2997. This is a GH5 shooting in 8-bit color, H.264, with the F17 20 millimeter prime. I've got a little bit of noise reduction in these clips, which is why it surprises me that it sticks so well as it does to 2997. In fact, the only time we really see any challenge with this footage as we're playing it back in the Linux system is when we throw in the fusion clips, and that tends to jump over to the processor, uh, that being the CPU, and creating a little bit of a bottleneck as it has to render and then push out those titles. Even there, though, you saw it was pretty smooth and pretty quick. Let's check out the system statistics. As it's running, we'll pop up the system monitor here, and what you're seeing is the, G the CPU threads as they execute. Let's keep in mind that we're running OBS. Of course, we do that when we do our benchmarks in Windows and I display them as well, so I think it's kind of fair there. Watching these threads as Fusion does its work to put title screens up, you see that a few of them run off by themselves, and that's a 32-thread workstation processor here, but when you've got one that's primarily doing all the work, it tells you that the application is not multi-threaded in a way that it can leverage the CPU architecture. This is something that backs up exactly what I've seen in Windows as Fusion does its job. Because I'm too lazy to format one of my NVMe drives, set it up with Linux, I put in a SSD, 120 gigabyte standard Kingston SSD, and it's the only difference between the Windows and the Linux machine configuration and spec. On to the results of our render test, which as always ran three, each test three times and was able to take the average. You can see immediately off the bat, in Linux, the H.264 blue bar is significantly shorter than the one over in the Windows space. Now this was weird because I used the hardware encoder in both instances on the 2080 Ti. There's a question as to whether or not the encoder got more resources in Linux, but it achieved a 15% difference and improvement over the Windows encoder. Crazy. Well, as you can see, that is not what I expected. I thought with the hardware encoder in the graphics card running both sets of tests, we'd end up with effectively the same thing. I don't know if more memory was available to the graphics card in Linux because the GNOME desktop was less heavy than maybe the Windows. Who knows? But it's cool, cool data to have and uh, hope it might help you. Thanks for watching. Please, um, I do respond to all the comments. So if you have questions or something weird you want researched, let me know. I love doing that stuff. And subscribe and like if you would. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.